Today, August Mortgage Stress Update. Hello again, I'm Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Welcome to our latest post covering finance and property news with a distinctively Australian flavour. Today we discuss the latest from our household surveys as we update our mortgage stress research to the end of August 2018. And by the way, if you value the content we produce, please do consider joining our Patreon program where you can support our ability to continue to make great content. Here's the link and it's in the comments below. We have released the August 2018 Mortgage Stress and Default Analysis Update. For context, remember the latest RBA data on household debt to income to March reached a new high of 190.1, and yesterday the RBA said one continuing source of uncertainty is the outlook for household consumption. Household income has been growing slowly and debt levels are high. And later, last week, the main risks to financial stability will most likely continue to relate to credit quality, notably banks' large exposure to a potential deterioration in housing loan performance is expected to remain a key issue. Now, our analysis of household finance confirms this. So, no surprise to see mortgage stress continuing to rise. Across Australia, more than 996,000 households are now estimated to be in mortgage stress, compared with 990,000 last month. Now this equates to 30.5% of unoccupied borrowing households. And in addition, more than 23,000 of these are in severe stress. And we estimate that more than 59,000 households risk 30-day default in the next 12 months. We continue to see the impact of flat wages growth, rising living costs and higher real mortgage rates. Bank losses are likely to rise a little as well. Recent events, such as the lift in some mortgage rates, the latest council rate demands, rising fuel costs and flat incomes continue to hit home. And in addition, as home prices are falling in some postcodes, the threat of negative equity is now rearing its ugly head. The fact that significant numbers of households have had their potential borrowing power crimped by lending standards related to being tightened and are therefore mortgage prisoners is significant. As we reported recently, up to 40% of those seeking to refinance are now having difficulty. And this is strongly aligned to those who are registering as stressed. Continued rise in living costs, noticeably childcare, school fees and fuel, whilst real incomes continue to fall and underemployment is causing significant pain. Many are dipping into savings to support their finances. Our analysis uses the DFA core market model, which combines information from our 52,000 household surveys, public data from the RBA, ABS and APRA, and private data from aggregators and lenders. The data is current to the end of August 2018. We analyse households' cash flow based on real incomes, outgoings and mortgage repayments, rather than using an arbitrary 30% of income. And households are defined as stressed when net income, or cash flow, does not cover ongoing costs. They may or may not have access to other available assets, and some have paid ahead, but households in mild stress have little leeway in their cash flows, whereas those in severe stress are unable to meet repayments from current income. In both cases, households manage this deficit by cutting back on spending, putting more on credit cards, and seeking to refinance, restructure, or sell their home. Those in severe stress are more likely to be seeking hardship assistance and are often forced to sell. Probably the default extends our mortgage stress analysis by overlaying economic indicators such as employment, future wages growth and CPI changes. And our core market model also examines the potential of portfolio risk of loss in basis points and value terms. Losses are likely to be higher among more affluent households, contrary to the popular belief that affluent households are well insulated. Regional analysis shows that New South Wales has 270,612 households in stress compared with 267,298 last month. Victoria has 270,551 compared with 279,907 last month. Queensland 175,102 compared with 174,137 last month. And Western Australia has 134,333 compared with 132,035 last month.
The probability of default over the next 12 months rose with around 11,200 in Western Australia, around 10,800 in Queensland, 14,700 in Victoria, and 15,800 in New South Wales. The largest financial losses relating to bank write-offs reside in New South Wales at 1.1 billion from owner-occupied borrowing and Victoria 1.43 billion from owner-occupied borrowings, although losses are likely to be highest in Western Australia at 5.1 basis points, which equates to $744 million. Turning to the top postcodes in terms of numbers of those in stress, there are rising pockets in the number of locations across the country. The postcode with the highest level of stress this month is a New South Wales postcode 2560, which includes Campbelltown in Western Sydney, where 7,234 households are in mortgage stress. From there we go to Western Australia to 6065, which includes Hocking and Tapping, where 6,995 are under pressure. And then the third most stressed postcode is around Toowoomba in Queensland, 4350, where 6,985 households are in stress. And the fourth highest is Victorian postcode 3805, Narry Warren and Fountain Gate in the Melbourne area, with 5,759 households in difficulty. Many of these areas have expanded fast in recent years with high population growth, plenty of new bills on small lots, and households with large mortgages relative to income. And some of the households on our list have higher than average incomes, but significant financial commitments and no real income growth. You can run through the rest of the top stress postcodes at your leisure. All the indicators are that pressure on households will intensify ahead with more running down savings, seeking additional credit or generally hunkering down. Not conducive for encouraging a lift in household spending, which was one of the main economic growth engines the country has relied on for the past decade. So there are more storm clouds ahead, we suggest. If you value the content we produce, please do consider joining our Patreon program where you can support our ability to continue to make great content. The link is in the comments below. And as always, if you like what you've seen here today, please share and like the post and add a comment or question. I read them all. And if you want to join the growing band of subscribers who receive alerts when we release new posts, do subscribe now. I'm Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Many thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.